Hi guys and welcome back to Mark's Boatworks. Um, today I just thought I'd make a quick video uh, regarding the Blackjack 42 and upgrading to the um, Castle Creations Hydra XLX2 speed controller. So there's a couple of sort of uh, issues that I've come across in doing this job and I thought I'd just share those with you, a couple of little um, uh, sort of tricks and tips that uh, I've uh, had to overcome so I thought I'd uh, make a little video about it. Um, some of you may have come across it, some of you might have uh, worked this out already but um, if not um, I will uh, take you through it and um, show you what we've come across and how we've overcome it. So stay tuned. Okay, so here we go. Um, like most things, you go to th start a job and think, oh, it's nice and simple, but uh, it's uh, a lot of the times in uh, RC boating, <laughs> nothing's ever easy. So anyway, the first thing I came across, um, which I'm still working on, um, I went to get the motor out and the um, screws on, this, on the motor mount here, um, one of them's decided to strip here and on the other side. So I'll um, just try and figure out how to get those out. Um, but managed to get the motor unbolted and I thought I'd just give it a bit of a look at because it's, um, yeah, I've just see I've uh, stripped it out there now. So this is the, the stock uh, 1300, um, so 1350 kV um, motor and um, yeah, the bearings in them were uh, a little bit ordinary. So that was the, uh, the back bearing, front bearing not so bad, but um, I've uh, basically replaced both of them now, so I've just got those fitted in in, uh, in, in the end casings. And the uh, stator was uh, a little bit corroded and a bit rusted, so I've just given it a bit of a, a clean up and hit it with a bit of Corrosion X, so it's come up fairly well too. So um, yeah, shouldn't have any issues there getting all that back together. Um, so on the um, Castle Creations, I've uh, fitted uh, QS8s and I've got a set of SMC batteries to go in here. Um, with the QS8s on as well. Um, so the first issue that I did come across um, in getting the um, Hydra in was um, taking the uh, old Spectrum ESC out, and some of you may have come across this already. Um, the screws that were um, you know normally go into the um, into the stock mounting um, had um, decided to sort of strip, and then I've put some larger stainless steel. Um, self tappers in, but in doing that, it's decided to um, split the um, the cowling here, um, just because yeah, it's, it's sort of old plastic, and um, I probably should have drilled it out a little bit more. But um, so what I've done, just to give you a bit of a tip, is um, <clears throat> I've cut some um, some brass tubing, and um, I'll put up on the screen the size that I used. It just fits over the um, the little cowling there quite nice, a little stub, and basically even though it's split, it keeps the plastic together and allows you to, uh, when you do screw in uh, a new screw, like a bit a larger, that's an M4 um, self-tapper. Oh, there you go, it's magnetic. Um, yeah, it's, it, it really grips on and holds. Um, so for my ESC, I've just used a little bit of um, white Perspex and up the front here, I've um, just used some really high density foam that I've double-sided taped in so that when the ESC is actually in place, um, it actually overhangs the, um, the 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 superstructure, the black uh, inlay there a little bit. So I just wanted some support for the end of the ESC, just in the case of a uh, a praying it doesn't sort of uh, lever and try and you know pop these um, screws out. So so that's what we've done there. Um, yeah. So all in all, I think that'll uh, that'll work quite well. So um, that was the first issue I came across. And then the next thing we um, were looking at was um, uh, soldering the 8mm um, bullets onto the um, stock motor um, for the XLS, so it takes the 8mm bullets. So there's a couple of little tips and tricks there that I've discovered um, with getting these soldered, so I'll take you through those in a minute. Right, so welcome up onto the workbench. Um, I've got my... Uh, drill vice um, here, the drill press vice. Um, I just find this works really well uh, when soldering at least anyway, so it's a nice sort of heavy duty uh, piece of machinery. Uh, over the time I've tried things like, um, you know, the helping hands, um, but 
unless they're secured down onto the bench, I just find them a little bit flimsy and there's a lot of uh, adjustments there that tend to um, allow the, you know, not to hold well, especially when you need to put a fair bit of pressure on when you're soldering. So um, yeah, so the vice press, uh, vice actually uh, works really well. Um, so yeah, we're um, soldering um, on the, the stock motor, which we've just got in bits at the moment the um, 6.5 millimeter bullets uh, in using the Castle Creations XLX2 we've got to put the 8 mil bullets on and I've just found a couple of little things with um, well soldering in general I'm not going to make this into a soldering tutorial most of you know how to do that um, and uh, for those of you beginning um, just yeah pop on YouTube and there's plenty of uh, good uh, tutorials the um, 8 mil bullets that come with these um, where you actually solder into the cup has a fairly big hole on either side um, which can cause a little bit of issue with um, getting solder in there initially when you're tinning these up because obviously it'll run and you don't want it running down onto the pins where it goes into the ESC so I've come up with a little trick um, that I um, yeah got as an extension uh, from again shout out to uh, Big B at Ironclad uh, he was talking about the um, uh, cooling pipe um, how it's heat resistant um, and I've actually done that on the uh, on one of the plugs already as you can see here so um, what I did is actually just stretched a piece of this uh, the, the larger pipe so that's the uh, I think it's the 8 mil outside diameter and 4 mil because uh, it's a fair stretch to get over this uh, cowling on the side so basically by stretching this piece of um, pipe over initially before you solder it just stops the solder running out the holes and actually helps contain I've just made this a fraction higher than the lip of the actual cup itself and um, managed to get yeah a really really good uh, conical sort of uh, uh, solder joint in there that's taken well for the uh, for the uh, the 10 gauge wire we've got um, running off the, the stock motor so yeah that's um, that's that so I'll just show you how I um, get the hose on first because that's a little bit of a trick in itself if you haven't seen it done so uh, I'll show you that so we've got our, uh, our bullet 8 mil bullet here and just taking a measurement and as I said just coming up a fraction higher than the actual cowling itself and just cutting that off and then um, as I said it's a bit of a stretch to get that on there so the best way I've found uh, if you've got a pair of long nose uh, or needle nose pliers that are able to actually stretch out um, this has got a little spring that contains it <clears throat> pops it back out um, so just by popping that in there and then reverse opening it it will allow you to it's a fair bit of a stretch but um, and it takes a little bit of work so I'll have to come this way so just sort of slide that in and it takes as I said, a little bit of pressure just to sort of get it on once you've sort of got it into that position you can gently slide your pliers out and then just keep working working it down onto the shoulder of the, the bullet there so I'll get that fixed up and uh, it takes a little bit of moving but eventually we get there so as you can see there now so we've got the the sleeve on which is covering the holes won't let the solder come out and the heat won't bother this at all and it's just a fraction higher than the actual bullet so any solder that sort of comes up above the, the bullet when you actually go to put your wire in which we'll show you in a moment um, won't sort of spill out over onto the bullet and onto the part that you don't need it uh, to go. The other tip with this um, that I thought was a really good idea um, that uh, Big B was talking about is that uh, I mean sometimes if it does ever happen but if the solder joint is going to melt um, when you're underway um, some blokes have had uh, situations where the solders actually run out and down into the ESC because as you might know with the um, plugs on the XLX it goes in vertically so the solder will just uh, liquefy and run down into the uh, sockets and solder your bullet into the uh, socket in the ESC and apparently it's uh, a little bit 
difficult to get out. So I'm just hoping to avoid that situation if it does happen. And um, again, hopefully this trick will uh, help in that regard. Okay, so we'll get some soldering going and I'll show you um, how to go from there. So the first step in getting these uh, bullets off obviously is just to cut the old uh, heat shrink off. Best way is just to get a, an X-Acto knife and just gently with the blunt side of the blade against the wire so you don't cut into it, just sort of gently just pull or push up on the thing, cut it open and um, that'll just come off fairly easily. Um, now, in getting these bullets off um, and using uh, a situation like we've got here with the vise, um, obviously it's all metal and it's a, a fairly big sort of a, a heat sink. Um, so instead of, uh, I, I was finding that just popping it into the vise like this uh, worked well on holding it, but what was happening is that trying to heat this up, it's a fairly big solder joint. And you'll find that um, because it's in the vise, it's the heat's just transferring to the vise straight away, so you're not getting enough heat into the solder joint, and it just won't melt it. Uh, and you'll sit there forever and heat the wires up. Um, I'm lucky at the moment; I've got the motor sort of half undone. So, uh, but you've just got to be careful; you don't um, get too much heat up into the casing, obviously. So, what I've found is that the um, best way to do that is just to isolate the bullet from the vise. And I've just got a couple of pieces of uh, five mil MDF here which I'll pop in the vise um, to hold the bullet. And in that regard now you've got a good sort of clamped job uh, that is isolated from the vise and you'll find that um, that will hold quite tightly. Um, and the heat that goes onto the joint will basically stay in the pin itself in the joint and that will melt fairly quickly. So uh, we'll do that now. I'm using a, uh, a fairly fine point uh, soldering iron here, but it's uh, on a, a variable uh, thermostat, so I've got it uh, cranked right up to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's at, at its hottest. Um, ideally, if you've got a larger um, uh, end on it, it, it's probably a little bit better. But basically what I do is I just sort of put the, the uh, sort of the thicker end right up onto the solder joint. And you're going to have to just tend to rock it a little bit. Um, sometimes by adding a little bit of solder into it, it just sort of starts the melting process a little bit of the solder. And then just keep the iron on and keep wriggling it and rocking it back and forth. It takes a fair bit and then all of a sudden you'll find that that will come loose. And that's that job done. Okay, just uh, gently carefully take that bullet out. Obviously it's going to be pretty hot, so let's use some pliers, get it out, put it aside, let it cool down. And we'll get on with uh, tinning the plug itself. Okay, so we've put our uh, 8 mil bullet in the um, between the MDF. You can see I've just got the um, shoulders of the plug just sit it, sitting down onto the, onto the MDF itself. Uh, so it's not going to rock or sway around. You don't need a lot of pressure with the wood there, so it tends to hold it quite well. Okay, so next thing to do is just to fill this cup basically with solder. So I'm just going to put up to around about three quarters in. Keeping the soldering on in there, just keep flowing solder in. And once it's sort of at that, about that three quarter sort of mark, we'll... Uh, We'll leave it go there. Okay, and then with the wire on our um, cable we've just taken off, just make sure you retin that again um, with uh, non factory solder, so they tend to have a fair bit of uh, non lead in that, so uh, we'll retin that. So I will use my helping hand here for this one, so. Just a case of getting the soldering iron onto the tip there and uh, just flooding some solder. It should take fairly well and you'll see it just absorbs down. Give it a little bit of time. Make sure it goes all the way around. And then you've got a nice tin bit of wire there ready to go again. Okay. Now for the fun part. So I've just got to reheat this cup up again. So basically it's just a case of getting the soldering iron into the cup there. As I said, my point's fairly fine, so it takes a little while for this to happen, but just applying, applying a little bit of pressure in there and swirling it around, you'll find you'll get the whole cup molten. Uh, get your 
wire ready to go and then when you're ready just insert it in up on the vertical and hold it let it set and once it's set then we should uh, have uh, a nice solder joint there done so after all that's finished and cooled down um, you will have yeah a nice tidy solder join contained um, with the um, cooling pipe so okay guys well hopefully uh, you picked something up from this video if you did uh, please like comment and subscribe um, we'll uh, obviously yeah just add some heat shrink onto there might need a piece bigger than this just to um, seal this whole join up and everything and then we'll um, get the motor back together get the ESC and the blackjack 42 and on the next video we'll have some uh, running footage for you so we will catch you then